Hello, and uh, today I thought I'd go through the process of installing uh, Hadoop inside of Ubuntu, inside of the Windows subsystem for Linux. To get things started, I went ahead and uh, downloaded uh, and, ins and installed uh, Ubuntu 20.04. Uh, this is the version that you'll want to use uh, if you follow the approach I do here. Uh, I don't know that it would work with 18, probably not. So you start off by launching uh, the environment. Uh, it's going to take a little bit to uh, get things set up and running, uh, but uh, eventually it will come up. Let's see if I can make that a smidge bigger. And so at this point it's getting uh, the environment set up for you. Uh, the next thing it'll do is ask you for a username uh, you want to use something other than root. Uh, I typically use my name because um, I'm not terribly original in that regard, but you could certainly call it whatever you wanted to um, and give yourself a password. And at this point, we've got uh, Ubuntu up and running. Uh, the, to make things a bit quicker, I've included um, uh, the I've already downloaded uh, the Hadoop distribution uh, in the tar uh, and zipped uh, file. Uh, you can see it's uh, it's here, uh, and I've also got several scripts uh, from the same location. Um, sorry, not bash sh. Um, and so I've got uh, several scripts to run. Uh, the, the purpose of all this is to, to reduce the, the chance of messing it up. Uh, and one way to do that is uh, uh, essentially um, automation. So, um, so to do that, what, what I've got here is a Hadoop install. Hadoop start and then Hadoop word count. Uh, install does what you would think. It basically goes through the process of doing the installation. Uh, the Hadoop start uh, kind of does what you would think. It's, it kicks it off and then word count works through the process of actually uh, essentially compiling and running word count. So to start off, uh, let's take a, a quick look um, at uh, Hadoop um, install. Uh, and so a few Unix commands here, um, uh, more uh, similar to what it does in DOS, lets you page through a thing, one at a, a file, one at a, a page at a time. So in this case, to, to walk through what I'm doing, um, I start off by basically giving you a pointer to where I figured this stuff out from, uh, so the, the source. And we start off by setting up Java. Uh, and so these, these commands all go through the process of getting Java uh, uh, basically open uh, JDK 8 uh, installed. Uh, and at the end of that, it prints out the version and which Java it's using. The next step is to go through the process of getting SSH to work locally uh, so that it basically uninstalls and then reinstalls OpenSSH server, uh, generates the keys that allow you to log on to it locally, and then starts the service back up. Uh, the next step is to, to work through Hadoop. I'm using, uh, I'm, I'm basically changing into my home directory with this tilde. Uh, you could just do CD and it would do the same thing. Then I'm doing a wget, which is a way of downloading from a URL, and I'm using the dash nc, which is no clobber. And so what that does is if the file exists, it doesn't download it again. The reason I did that is so I can not have to download it repeatedly and copy it over from someplace else on my local drive into uh, the environment. You wouldn't need to do that if you're running the script by itself. You just have to wait for it to finish the download. Once you have that file, uh, your next process is to expand it out. And this is very much like a, a, an unzip or um, a decompression stage. Uh, and the end of that, you'll have a folder named Hadoop-3.3.0. Uh, we change into that directory um, and then uh, basically change into underneath of it, um, etc slash Hadoop, and then we print the directory we uh, make a copy essentially or move the existing core site XML file to a backup. Then I use the wget command again uh, to download from my GitHub or, or, or Git um, repository, uh, GitHub repository, a, uh, uh, an updated core site file that has done nothing more than insert the following into that file in the appropriate location. Again, the idea here is trying to minimize the chances of messing it up. Uh, and then the next step is to do the same sort of thing with HDFS uh, site, uh, which again, uh, very uh, similar 
uh, it's just basically modifying the configurations and then the last thing is to do uh, the same thing with uh, the uh, uh, the Hadoop environment SH. Uh, so downloading that modified file that does nothing more than include an export of Java home uh, equal to something inside of it. Uh, then I basically navigate up back where I'm supposed to be uh, and then um, set some environment variables into the profile uh, file. Uh, and that basically is similar to what you do inside of environment variables inside of Windows. So that's the intent. That's what it's supposed to do. So let's see what happens when we run it. To run uh, sh uh, files, uh, you do the dot slash and then the name of the file, and we kick it off. And because the first thing I do is run a, a sudo command, which is basically running it with elevated permissions, I need to ask for my credentials. And so I enter them in, and it goes through the process of doing all those um, updates that we talked about at the beginning. Uh, and it's pulling down any uh, components that are necessary. Um, and then uh, going through now and doing the various installations. Um, I periodically try, uh, and it's always kind of challenging because uh, I've been doing this stuff, to go back and take a look and see if there's any kind of errors. Because my script, uh, not terribly smart. Uh, it's basically just saying what all it's done. Uh, it, to make it better, you'd be checking error conditions and stopping if something bad happens. I'm not doing any of that. I'm basically assuming life is good and it all works the first time, which is uh, not necessarily a valid assumption. Uh, so at this point, we're again going through the process of updating uh, Java, getting Java installed and updated. Uh, that's primarily because Hadoop re relies on uh, Java to work effectively. While it's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up uh, Visual Studio Code on the, the so I can take a look at those uh, scripts in case something interesting happens. Not <laughs> that I think it will, but based upon historical experience, uh, there's always a chance of something to not work. Looks like OpenJDK 8. Next step will be for it to, to print out what version of Java it's running, uh, results of which Java. So, which that skimmed right by because we're, uh, it's right here in the middle. And you can see we're running 11.0.11. Uh, uh, .11. And at this point, and reinstalled server, generated the keys, um, and should be doing a sudo service ssh start soon. So there generated the key. And now we're into the uh, expanding out Hadoop, uh, creating the, the tree structure uh, that it all houses. Now I've switched into the folder. I'm pulling down the various modified files, starting with uh, the core uh, site. And so now the question is to check and see, um, first of all, the first sanity check here is, uh, can we SSH to localhost? And if we're able to, that means that the SSH server is working uh, correctly. Um, and it's asking me, do I really want to do that? So that means it's working. Uh, it's adding localhost to quite a few things open. So we're actually, even though it looks the same, we're actually inside of a, a different session. So if I type exit, I'm back to the original session. So I closed my SSH shell onto myself. The reason you need SSH is because that's how um, 
it, it all uh, works right as far as uh, the commands that it sends is intended to go to a server you're not really intended to be logged on to the Hadoop cluster you're you're intended to be connecting to it from something else so it's a little bit of an odd thing for us to actually be on uh, the server uh, so uh, another thing that might make sense is uh, to do things like an LS and then dollar sign uh, Hadoop class path and so that's telling me uh, that it may not have been set. Um, or um, let's try source profile and try that again. So that's one area, even though I have um, that inside of my script, uh, as soon as I modify Actually, that's in the next script. So, uh, no, that's it's perfectly valid. So, to go ahead and move on to Hadoop start, which would be the next thing, um, let's go ahead and see what happens. So uh, what I was attempting to do there, uh, and it didn't necessarily go terribly well, and this may actually be better because uh, I know for sure this way that it is getting launched. My first line of my, um, uh, uh, and it should be echo, not print. Uh, my first um, line of that script, um, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy um, it over again. is to go through what that that's doing so uh, Hadoop and start so uh, the the first line here uh, was to try to tell the the user that you're gonna need to type exit because I'm gonna SSH to myself uh, I use the word print not echo so that was that was that error that went by uh, and so let's try this again All right, so let's take a look. Um, so it did, I, I'm actually in this second line. So it did open up uh, the shell. Uh, now I need to type exit to get back to my other shell. Uh, maybe not, or maybe I can't do that. Oh no, it's actually running. So I shouldn't have uh, hit control C. So what's happened is I, I opened up, so I proved that I could SSH to my local machine. Um, and so I exited out of that, came back, and now we're seeing an error message saying that it, uh, uh, it failed um, on the name node. So uh, to walk, work my way through, I'm gonna go ahead and run this one at a time. Uh, this is the, uh, the same script um, and basically this is what's in Hadoop start so I'm just working my way through it one at a time the first thing is to stop all the processes uh, and then do JPS to see what's running to make sure everything truly did stop and they did only thing running is that so probably this is what didn't work which was formatting the name node uh, so let's go ahead and run that All right, and then we'll do uh, Hadoop start all. And what that does is start up all of uh, the, uh, essentially all of the processes that need to be running uh, to make this all work. Probably don't need to start them all, uh, but I find it to be a little better. Um, and then the next thing is to see if I can make a directory. And you do that, first of all, let's try HDFS, and that tells us that it is, we're able to talk to HDFS, DFS, LS. Let's see if anything is there. Um, and so this is where uh, I've seen this numerous times. Um, one of the things that 
I found to be somewhat useful is uh, uh, to basically stop the subsystem uh, and do it again. So open up a command prompt and go in and say WSL shutdown with two dashes. And that essentially terminates all of the WSL processes. Then come back in and, and launch it again. So that's basically starting up uh, and it's making sure that we're in a clean state. And then uh, because of how I've, I've written things, you're probably going to need to do the sudo service SSH start because I don't believe it auto starts. If I can type my password. Oh, the cap box is on. And then again, localhost. So it is working. Um, and so at that point, uh, we probably want to do the start. Let's let's do the format first. So let's see if this works. Try that again. That's actually the, the challenge. Now the next step is to try. Um, and the S bin contains the things such as uh, start all. And I'm going to try just start DFS. see if we can make a user folder in the same challenge uh, bear with me for one moment I've ran into this numerous times I always get past it and I'm never certain exactly what I do so bear with me one moment well that was uh, it was interesting and so the the short answer uh, I believe uh, and maybe it was just trial and error was uh, the, the challenge seemed to be around formatting the, the name node. And so I added the dash uh, non-interactive uh, to the process and it worked that time. So the, the reason why you get that error message that I was getting, uh, the whatever it is, uh, uh, 900 or, or whatever, uh, is because the name node's not been formatted or the services aren't up and running. So uh, making sure uh, that they're running is important. So you can see back here where I ran uh, non-interactive uh, and it was then able to go through, added some additional uh, information as well. Uh, but uh, uh, for whatever reason, uh, that seemed to uh, make a, a, a difference. So once I've done that, then we can go back to the process that I was going through. Uh, so uh, we have... Um, I have created or, or formatted the, the uh, uh, name node. Uh, so now we pick back up with the script of going through and creating some additional folders. Uh, so what I've done is created the essentially the user's location. Uh, and so now what I'm going to do is paste in the rest of this. Um, and so uh, what this is doing is creating, uh, we've already got a user folder. Uh, I've created a, a folder that will be my name, this is the user's name, uh, and then uh, an input folder underneath of it, and then an output folder underneath of that or at the same level as well. And so now if I do a ls slash user, I can see uh, that folder uh, exists. If I go to Allen, I should see input and output. So we basically got it up and running. Uh, so the next step is to check, uh, try out word count. So uh, uh, filling uh, for those not of faint of heart, uh, we can go ahead and start this process. So uh, I've got a script, but I'm going to step through it a, a line at a time to walk through what it does. You switch uh, to your home directory, uh, make a directory underneath of it called word count, um, 
and then switch into that directory. I then download uh, uh, the wordcount.java, uh, so the source file, uh, and also uh, Summer's Day, which is uh, the poem by uh, William Shakespeare, uh, and then uh, basically put Summer's Day into the input folder, uh, run, uh, essentially compile uh, the Java program into a class file, take that class file, turn it into um, uh, essentially a jar file named WC, using the class files that are produced in the in the compilation step and then you run the class file using the Hadoop command. So to step through those one at a time I've uh, switched into okay we switch into our home folder just uh, to be where we know where we are. I create a folder uh, called word count then get into that folder uh, pull down uh, the uh, uh, word count uh, program. Uh, it's the, the standard one that goes with this distribution of Hadoop, uh, not something I authored. Uh, it is kind of the hello world of uh, distributed processing. Uh, and so you can see that it is here now. And if you're interested in what it looks like, uh, basically you get your imports, uh, you define your, your map function, uh, and uh, your uh, reduce function and then the main that goes with it. And so once we've got the code, the next thing is to get the data. Uh, not a very long file, probably should do something bigger, uh, but uh, um, you can get the, the idea of what we're counting here. Probably should also be doing some pre-processing to strip out some characters and normalize punctuation, capitalization, lots of good stuff. Uh, but the next step is to put this into HDFS. It's on the local Linux machine's uh, file system, but it's not in Hadoop's file system. It's not in HDFS. So that's what this is, and it's putting it into the input folder. Uh, if we then go back up here and do a um, HDFS ls uh, allen input, uh, we'll see that file now exists inside of that folder, inside of HDFS. Uh, so the next step, uh, and another place where things can go horribly wrong, is uh, the actual compilation phase. And with any luck, uh, we'll be able to compile, and of, of course not, because that's how this usually goes. Uh, fortunately, I, I think I know what's causing this. Uh, it's typically the uh, Hadoop um, environment. Uh, so let's go back up and take a look here, because I think I can actually... Uh, figure this one out on the fly. I think I've got a word export in there that shouldn't be. Uh, and I try to, as I do these, um, fix them as I go through. Um, and I'm taking a look. Uh, it should be in... Uh, and... This one, yeah, there should, uh, I don't export there. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do the uh, switch over to code so we can see that. It's going to take a little while because it has to download the file. Uh, while it's doing that, I'll um, take a quick look in that folder. Um, and so that you're not having to hit fast forward, I'll pause this until we get to the next step. And I'm back. Um, so I uh, figured out what was wrong. The the export path and uh, export Hadoop class path, uh, one of those two was not set correctly. Uh, I just executed them directly inside of here, not inside of the context of a shell script or the profile. And, and it worked. So uh, we can now take a look. I ran the Java compile. Uh, and you can now see that there is um, a, a class file. 
uh, actually uh, uh, the the word count um, dot class uh, and so on. So the next step is to go through and do the actual uh, essentially linking uh, of uh, or packaging it up. Linking is not the right word. Packaging it up into a jar. Uh, so uh, we use the jar command to do that. And again, you can see there's now a wc.jar. And then the final step is to run uh, the Hadoop command to actually run that. And this is going to take that, that jar command and essentially uh, the jar and submit it to Hadoop. Uh, and it's going to run through and count the various words uh, and produce output uh, into the output folder. Uh, in particular, it's going to produce something called summer's day underscore count uh, in the, the, the output folder because that's what we told it to do. Uh, scrolling back here a little bit, uh, you can see the various stages as it goes through uh, and uh, all the various information. We started here, we said uh, here's the input, here's the output. So the final step is to take a look at um, um, As soon as I remember uh, my commands. Oh, DFS, not FS. And then we can actually do dash cat output slash summers day count. And this will show us. Um, if I spell it right, it's been a very long day. All right, what am I doing wrong? Uh, that's right, that's actually a folder. Uh, so you have to go into um, the, the way that uh, this, this sort of stuff works is it, it essentially creates a partition, the partition uh, within that partition, depending upon your um, uh, 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 concurrency. In this case, there's only uh, one uh, thing being ran. Uh, and so now we should be able to see uh, the word counts. So uh, again, the, the degree of de parallelism controls the, the number of outputs uh, that are produced. In this case, it's a single uh, process, essentially. So there's a single file. But we can now see that AND, uh, capital AND, is uh, the most frequent, occurring three times. But because we're not doing any kind of normalization of the input, the lowercase AND is two times. So uh, the various other things, including periods and commas and so on, should be cleaned up if you were doing this for real. And so with that, uh, we've actually finally got a uh, word count to run. A Hadoop cluster stood up in, H in WSL2. Uh, and uh, so uh, we can call that a, a victory, albeit one that was uh, uh, with a little bit intervention here along the way. Uh, so I will conclude uh, with that. If you have questions, let me know. Uh, stay safe. We'll speak again soon.